You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. In this episode of Barn Stories, we learned that the most important skill to have when retraining a retired racehorse is patience. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prinz, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. There's a special place in the next life for people who train off the track thoroughbreds for new careers. There certainly is. The story in this episode focuses on the retraining of a horse named Murphy, who, like many thoroughbreds coming off a race career, has trouble changing gears. His trainer is preparing him for an event called the Thoroughbred Makeover, sponsored by the Retired Racehorse Project, and it's taking every bit of horsemanship skills she has, mixed with incredible amounts of patience. But she also learns about the positive attributes that Murphy and his fellow former racehorses bring to the equation. He's smart, athletic, and eager to please, even if he's not sure how. With consistent and kind training, he comes around and makes tremendous progress. But the real test will be whether he can hold together through the bustle of activity surrounding the makeover itself. Let's find out how it went by listening to Murphy's Makeover, written by Christine Davis and read by Taylor Autumn. I sat in the arena with tears running down my face, my legs trembling with exhaustion. It was Wednesday, and in two days I was scheduled to compete in the Thoroughbred Makeover, the annual show sponsored by the Retired Racehorse Project. The three-day event, which features competition in 10 different disciplines, is open to retired racehorses with 10 months or less of retraining. Hundreds of thoroughbreds were here all with trainers anxious to show off the work they'd done to prepare their off-the-track thoroughbreds for their new careers. At the moment, I was not one of them. I can't do this, I yelled across the giant covered arena of the Kentucky Horse Park, where my mother, Jerry, sat in the stands. For the past 10 months, she had been my assistant trainer, my groom, my psychiatrist, my veterinary technician, and my groundwork expert. Breathe, she said, then get off, you both need a break. I dismounted and sighed as Murphy jigged and whinnied the entire walk back to his stall. Ten months before, I was sitting outside a coffee shop on a business trip in sunny Los Angeles, scrolling through Facebook, when a striking chestnut face with kind eyes and a blaze popped up on my feed. He was listed with a nonprofit organization that works to connect retiring racehorses with potential buyers. And although I could see hundreds of posts for thoroughbreds each week, there was something about him that caught my attention. Over the past few years, I have retrained and rehomed eight off the track thoroughbreds. And when searching for new prospects, I've learned to skim the ads quickly, looking for certain keywords. This ad contained the words smart, eventing prospect, and lots of spirit. These expressions, I've learned, can sometimes translate to, this horse is a real head case. Regardless, I like that he was a war horse, with no reported injuries or unsoundness after 41 starts. His price was low, $500, and he seemed like a good candidate for retraining and rehoming. So I called my mother and told her I needed her to go pick up a racehorse named U Whippersnapper. It's January, Christine, and the track is two hours away. I then sent her the link to his photo and waited. She promptly replied, tell them I'll be there tomorrow. Although I have worked with many retired racehorses, 
I had never participated in the thoroughbred makeover. Friends and family had encouraged me to enter, but I hadn't shown seriously in years and was reluctant to dust off my hunk coat. Still, I love the athleticism and work ethic of thoroughbreds. And I like the idea of taking part in an event with more than 500 other trainers who have the same passion for the breed. So began the retraining of You Whippersnapper, now renamed Murphy. Of all the off-the-track thoroughbreds I'd restarted, Murphy proved the most difficult by far. I'm usually quick to admonish people when they say they don't like crazy thoroughbreds, a stigma that has followed the breed for many years. In my 25 years of riding them, I find most to be sensible and smart. But Murphy was doing everything he could to confirm the bad stereotype. We worked on ground manners, lunging, balance, basics, basics, excruciatingly slow basics. We would move two steps forward, then ten back. Under saddle, Murphy had little to no brakes. And when he would see or hear something that made him uncomfortable, he would bolt, rear, and buck, sometimes simultaneously. Horse Week, brought to you by Bowringer Ingelheim, is back for its third year, November 5th through the 11th, with on demand starting November 12th. Don't miss a minute of the Horse Week action, including features with Trevor Brazil and Miles Baker, the Budweiser Clydesdales, Dan James, Sabine Shoot Carey, Sherry Schwarzenberger, and more. Tune in from the barn, office, or the comfort of your couch. Equine Network is making it easy to watch the week-long celebration from any smart device. Visit horseweek.tv for more information or to watch your favorite features from 2022 and 2021. And so we go back to groundwork and trust exercises and more groundwork. Meanwhile, I was checking the trainer's forum on the RRP website. Everyone else seemed to be posting videos of their thoroughbreds quietly jumping hunter courses while I was going to horse shows just trying to walk around the warm-up arena without killing anyone. While they were posting champion ribbons, I was entering and losing walk trot classes. Nonetheless, I knew I couldn't push Murphy any faster than he was ready to go. Finally, as the months ticked by, Murphy began to let me in. He became more comfortable off the farm. He started to jump gymnastic sets without a bridle. I taught him to kick a giant ball, to jump through smoke, to pivot in a hula hoop, to enter and stand inside a small tent. We were still light years away from the quiet packers I was seeing every day in the RRP forum, but I couldn't have been more excited about his progress. We were ready. But now, just two days before the competition, I wasn't sure we were ready at all. Walking back to our stall, deflated and defeated, I tried to understand why Murphy had reverted back to his worst behavior. Was it the racetrack atmosphere of being surrounded by hundreds of other thoroughbreds? Was it the hustle and bustle of the competition? I worried that I would enter the ring for our freestyle class, only to have to spend five minutes doing relaxation exercises in front of a pitying audience. But then, something magical happened. I began walking around the barns and talking to the other trainers. I learned that for every perfect video posted on the RRP website, there were hundreds of blooper reels. We were all in the same boat. Over a couple glasses of wine, I ended up laughing with another girl about her unplanned airs above the ground. Everywhere I went, I heard stories of thrills, spills, successes, and failures. I realized we were all here for the very same reasons. To promote the thoroughbred. To show their heart. To give these horses a chance when they otherwise might not have one. And we couldn't lose sight of that. Friday arrived, and somehow a quiet determination had replaced my nerves. When the time came, I made my way to the arena and watched my family and friends set up the props we had used in our practices countless times. Then, I heard the first few bars of our soundtrack, 
and I felt Murphy relax. In that moment, I knew he was with me. We were going to do this. The tears came back, but this time, they were all out of joy. The routine went flawlessly. We started in Western Tack as my mother tossed a hula hoop and I caught it, swung it, and pivoted inside it. I stood on Murphy's rump as we snuck into a tent, and he stood perfectly still as I changed tack, remounted, and cantered out. Then we came to the finale, two smoke bombs lit around a Liverpool jump. Murphy's eyes locked in on the pool, the smoke billowing around us, daring him to follow his instinct to go in the opposite direction. We got this, he conveyed through his body language. And together, we soared through the smoke. I threw a triumphant fist into the air when I saw our score. 80 out of 100. I was overwhelmed with joy and love for this maniacal, brilliant beast. I reveled in our 17th place finish. With the excitement of the week finally behind us, we began the long journey home. At a rest stop, I checked on Murphy in the trailer, relaxed and happily munching on his hay. I thanked him for giving me his all, and in response, he snuggled his forehead into my chest while I scratched his chin. I made a promise to him that we would stick together, and in that moment, I went online and immediately deleted his sale ad. He had tested every fiber of my strength and pushed me to the edge of giving up. But in the end, somehow, he saved me. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.